Hey everybody, Casmo here, and we're going to take a look at some of the stuff that Wags presented in his uh, video about the TADs. Uh, I know I had started to do some cockpit videos, but the reality is it's it's really tough to do without access to uh, to the video and being able to show stuff. So I held off on the TADs and the TDAC uh, until we could get to some point where we could see some video about it and highlight some things. And of course, Wags did a really good job uh, explaining this stuff. Uh, and kind of going through the basics and of course we're going to get into the more advanced stuff but I do want to harp on a few things that he talked about uh, just to help guys understand why it's important. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the sight versus sensor uh, and I know that sometimes this can be confusing. It was sort of confusing uh, when I was going through training. Uh, just think of it this way. A sensor is how you see and a sight is how you aim and so understanding that the uh, TDAC, or correction, the TADs, could be used as a sight and a sensor is important. So uh, what that means is that you can just flip it on and uh, kind of use it as your, uh, like a pinvis, essentially. Um, it's just going to move a little bit slower, actually it moves a lot slower, but uh, you can still just kind of look around, it's going to track with your head, it's going to give you the basic uh, sort of flight symbology uh, when you're in sensor mode. And then when you switch it to sight mode, now you're using it as a sight for the weapon system. So you're going to get different symbology, uh, and it's going to move based on a variety of things. So as Wags pointed out, that you could uh, use these acquisition sources. And that's the next thing that can get uh, somewhat confusing and sort of uh, there's a lot of options there. Uh, just understand an acquisition source is uh, essentially you telling the TADS what you want it to acquire. Um, and what you want it to base its movement off of. Uh, so a, a fairly standard technique, uh, as Wags alluded to, is to leave your acquisition source up as the pilot's uh, helmet sight, so the PHS. Uh, you're going to have that selected, and you're not going to have it slaved. So that slave button there is what's going to trigger it to go to that acquisition source. So essentially, you're going to be flying around. You're going to be using your thumb force controller. You're going to be moving the tads, looking around, or you're just going to have it fixed forward. Um, and the idea is that, you know, you're doing your own scanning and the pilot's looking around and a lot of times the pilot's going to see stuff that maybe you don't because, uh, especially if you're looking, uh, down at the TDAC or you're looking inside doing stuff, you know, he's out looking around. If he sees something and he says, you know, gunner target my line of sight, you can quickly hit that slave button and immediately the TADS is going to go directly to where he is looking. Now, you need to kind of be quick on this, hit the slave button, let the TADS move to that spot, then hit the slave button again, because again, it's tied to his head. So if he needs to suddenly turn his head for, for whatever reason, uh, the TADS is just gonna keep slewing with him. So uh, that's where that crew coordination comes into play. You hit the slave button, uh, you let him know that you're, you're on it, uh, and then he can start moving his head around again normally. Uh, and then just confirm uh, what he's looking at. So he may say, you know, a, a tank at my line of sight. Uh, and then you just confirm that you see a tank. So that slave button is very important. So when we're talking about what kind of keys we need to have mapped, we definitely want to have the slave button mapped uh, for somewhere that we can get to quickly on the TDAC. Another popular technique, uh, certainly one that I use, is uh, essentially sort of cheat the system. Put the TADS into sight mode and then have it set as your helmet as the acquisition source. So essentially it's set as a sight and you're using it almost like a sensor and it's just tracking your head movement. So now you can look outside, uh, so you can use your, your unaided eye, your, your left eye, and be looking around, but your right eye can actually be using the, the, the enhanced you know, FLIR or the zoom capability of the TADS. And then if you do see something, you can just quickly uh, deslave it and it's locked on to whatever you were looking at. So this is a little bit uh, higher math, if you will, of how to use the TADS and, and use the acquisition sources. Now, another key thing that Wags pointed out in this video, and it goes back to our key mapping discussion, is uh, that update store button. So one of the first things that you should do uh, when you do find something of interest is is do a target store, right? So, so laze it, uh, store that as a target, and now you've got all this information. So think about it this way. If you're cruising along and suddenly you find something, uh, if you can quickly acquire it with the TADS, squirt it with the laser and update, now you can do all this maneuvering. You can get away if you're in danger, getting, getting shot at. Uh, you can push back. You can, you can do whatever you need to do now, but you have that target area stored. So now that you're able to move back several kilometers or, or whatever, get behind a train feature, uh, you can always stay oriented on that target area and very quickly through the, the technique that, uh, that Wags uh, pointed out, 
is go into your coordinates and uh, just acquire that target. So now you've set that as an acquisition source. Uh, same can be said for a waypoint. If you have a waypoint set on a target, let's say you're going to hit a known target with a waypoint at it, you can just set your acquisition source to that waypoint. So there's a lot of utility in uh, in the slave and uh, acquisition source uh, uh, technique. And it's something that you should definitely start to just kind of wrap your head around um, once you get into the module and can play with it. Now, as you can imagine, there's a lot of multi-crew uh, coordination that has to happen to make this work the right way. Uh, and really, that's where a lot of the fun comes out of it, um, being able to, uh, to to work together in that way, especially, like I said, when the, when the pilot can see a target, and you can quickly kind of acquire what he sees. Uh, you know, and the same works the other way. So the, the pilot can, can set the TADs as his acquisition source. Of course, it's not going to automatically snap his head to it, but it gives him those uh, steering cues that we've talked about previously. Uh, so if you're letting him know, hey, I see something uh, my, my, you know, TADs line of sight or my line of sight, he can quickly put up your, your helmet sight or your TADs uh, as his acquisition source, get those cueing dots, and it'll uh, give him some reference that he can look. So there's a lot of uh, neat ways that the aircraft helps the crew see what the other person is, is doing or looking at, and also a lot of ways to help orient yourself on the target. Uh, if you're a, a K-50 uh, driver, uh, I think you can probably already see just with what we're talking about, uh, the increased situational awareness, but also it's a little bit simpler, uh, to store these targets and, you know, there's not as many button pushes and it's just a little bit easier to, to kind of store stuff and, and be able to pull it back up and reference it. And of course you do get the grid coordinates, so that can be very helpful with passing grids on to, uh, you know, other aircraft or, uh, or ground forces. Anyway, I'm really excited to uh, to let you guys uh, get in on this and, and start playing around with it. It is a complex system. I know I've seen some of the comments down in WAG's video that sort of indicate a uh, holy cow, what are we getting into? Um, I've said it before. This is you know this is the hornet of helicopters. Uh, it's going to be more advanced and more uh, technical than than really anything that we've got so far in the DCS lineup. Uh, so you're definitely going to have to get your boots on and uh, and and study on this one, but. I, I tell you, once you get going, it, it's going to be a lot of fun, and, and you're going to see uh, just how lethal this this platform can be. So hopefully we can uh, get our, our hands on this soon, and, and you guys can get out there and start uh, putting warheads on foreheads. I think you're really going to enjoy it. I appreciate you guys watching. We'll talk to you later.